Hello, everyone. Welcome to this uh, podcast, as you like to call the pod. Uh, this is my buddy, Benjamin Carr. Uh, yeah, hi. Uh, <laughs> nice to meet everyone digitally. Uh, yeah. Great to be here, and it's an honor to be on uh, Ahmed's pod. The pod. The pod. <laughs> so California. So, yeah, you were, you're kind of just in a nearby state visiting family, and uh, you just happened to post a bunch of artwork. And I'm like, dude, this is yeah. awesome. How you doing, man? And you're like, oh, I'm actually, you know, not too far away. And you, your willingness to drive three hours to kind of hang out was kind of an honor for me. So thanks for coming out. Yeah, man, my pleasure. No, I, I had to uh, escape the fires in California, man. It's bananas out there. Uh, the fires, not so much, but the smoke, man. So I, uh, you know, just visiting family here in the Midwest and mm. great to see you. Right. Likewise. Yeah. How you been, man? <laughs> I've been good, man. You know, um, yeah, it's, uh, it's really good to, to get out of the state and be able to breathe again. Um, yeah, yeah yeah so i'm kind of waiting for that stuff to die down and then you know i'm looking forward to getting back to my <laughs> workstation to to dive back into work you know right on so uh people already know who i am let's introduce you more uh officially yeah now uh from what i understand you uh right now you're pursuing the concept art field right doing mm -hmm. portfolios for that for character design however prior to that you were actually working professionally as a uh, an animator, 3D, yeah. 3D animator. Yeah, 3D animator. That's right. Yeah. Okay, and uh, as you, as I recall, you had Sony Animation, Disney Animation, like mm -hmm. the big stuff, not just like you know, uh, personal projects. So. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, um, I had great experiences there, mm -hmm. uh, and I remember the feeling of being in the halls at some of those studios yeah. and just admiring all of the amazing concept art from just you know artists I admire, Glenn Keane, yeah. Andy Harkness, and people like that and just thinking, man, like that would be so cool to do. And, um, you know, when I was younger, I was really into the more traditional stuff and, uh, and I kind of got away from it for various reasons. Mm. And so I was living in Colombia, and right. That's I, crazy. Yeah. And so I decided, you know, uh, man, it would be really cool to kind of yeah. try it, you know, get yeah. back into it. Todavía uh, puedes hablar español? Ah, sí, podemos hablar en español. Si ah, sí, sí, vamos. <laughs> Entonces, uh, vamos a empezar con... I'm just kidding. <laughs> that would be awesome. I'm actually doing a workshop for uh, a Colombian uh, school called Blank Atelier. Oh, and wow. So that's uh, October 10th, I believe. October that's great. 8th, yeah. Yeah, they have a really amazing accent there. It's mm -hmm. such a beautiful country, beautiful people, beautiful right. weather. It's just an amazing place. I, I would love to visit. I was actually supposed to fly out there, but obviously... Yeah, you know. right on. Yeah, I lived yeah. there for about a year. Which uh, city? Medellin. Ah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, they, uh, th at that point in my life, I had actually just transitioned from, from a job and I, I had just kind of been burned out. So I took about two years and I, I traveled the world and yeah. I ended up in Colombia for about a year learning Spanish. So that was before or after the 3d animation after, stuff? after. Okay. Yeah. All right. And, uh, it was a great, it was great for inspiration, you yeah. know? Yeah. Uh, but also, um, you know, I kind of, I, I, you know, after I was there for a while, I just, you know, I miss it. I love art and uh, I wanted to, you know, dive back in. Right. And I thought, you know, if I'm going to do the, the concept thing, it would be a good time to do it now. Okay. And so, do you remember which pieces of art that really inspired you the most to be like, I want to leave 3D animation despite it being a, you know, stable job to yeah. pursue and take the risk for a concept? Yeah, art. fully. I've always been a, you know, like a Star Wars sci fi mm. nerd. I love, uh, I had such a huge passion for Warhammer 40,000 when I was a kid. I would okay. just sit there for like six hours and just paint those figurines. The figurines. Yeah. Right on. Yeah, yeah. And so to me, that timelessness of being able to just dive into the creative process and really just that state of bliss okay. is always sort of what I've, I've been searching for. And so I was always familiar with, with those type of artists from just a young age, you know, the Warhammer stuff. And, yeah, yeah. and um, I've always just been into that, those genres. And then I discovered like Frank Frazetta. Okay, and yeah. that really was a huge transition for me, knowing like, oh, you can actually make money doing this, you know, mm -hmm. um, huge inspiration. And then also, you know, as I got older, you know, Ian McKaig, I love all of his work. He's a mm -hmm. huge inspiration to me. Um, and, you know, now today, some of the more contemporary artists like, you know, my mentors, John Park, right. Q Fang. Yeah. Um, I love Brian Matias's work. Mm -hmm. uh, have tons of respect for those guys. Uh, you know, obviously you as well. Um, <laughs> love the painterly style. Yeah. yeah. So, um, you know, yeah, I would say those were my biggest influence in terms of specific pieces. Uh, it's hard to pin one, one specific down, like, yeah. you know, but I would say, 
Um, Ian McKaig did this one piece that I just loved. It was actually a, a pen piece where it was, um, it was from Alice in Wonderland, where it's like yes, the rabbit and the yeah. guy. I mean, I just, the composition, the the, the Do you have his book? Show. Yeah, oh yeah, I've okay, got two cool. copies actually. Okay, good, good. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I was about to whip it out. Yeah, yeah, man. So I would say that was a huge influence. Okay. For sure. That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, so uh, I want to go back to this this whole uh, concept art thing that you're mm-hmm. pursuing because you're yeah. taking the risk. Uh, you've left uh, the animation world, although you're still teaching online for mm-hmm. animation. Yeah. And, you know, from what you've described is you have a pretty good teaching method. You even have like a... Um, a course with like PDF and videos. Yeah. Yeah. You should send me the link for that and I'll put it in there. Do you want to describe that real quick? Yeah, sure. Uh, Yeah. It's, uh, it's basically like an ebook, Mm. you know, it's, but it has videos in it. Yeah. It's got videos, got like eight hours of video, 16 chapters, um, Uh you know, $75. Who's it for? Entry level animators? Yeah. Portfolio. What's pretty much the gamut, you know, Mm. like if you, I would recommend it for beginning and intermediate advanced, you'll probably learn something, Mm. but you know, runs the gamut. But, um, but yeah, I use it for my students that are trying to like bridge the gap in their understanding. And you know, in terms of the value, I mean, it's it's pretty good considering how much an actual class costs. Right. So the content in that ebook with the tutorials and stuff, yeah. uh, how much would they have to spend at a university to get that knowledge? That would be about two classes. So depending mm-hmm. on the university, you know, if you're at Art Center, it's like ten grand. Okay. If you're someplace, if you're at Brainstorm, sixteen hundred. How much is your thing? Seventy-five. Okay, cool. Seventy-five <laughs> grand. So, yeah, seventy-five. <laughs> no, seventy-five million billion. Yeah. yeah. Okay. No. <laughs> right, very cool. So, uh, yeah, I just wanted to bring that up because, yeah. you know, whatever. But uh, so you, uh, I remember seeing your character designs about a year ago. Mm-hmm. You showed them to me at Lightbox. Um, yeah. And they were good, um, but they weren't as I, you know, kind of. Did some sketches over them. You yeah, know, I was like, well, it's it, it doesn't have the pizzazz, it doesn't have yeah, the yeah. impact. I think, as you said, save as it doesn't have that save as. Yeah, right. right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And and what he's talking about is sometimes I'll see an image online, and if I really like it, I right click save. Yeah, and I, and I put it on my computer or pin, Pinterest or something, and it didn't have that quality. These the current work that you have now, I was super impressed with, and I'm like, that was quite the jump. And you mentioned, mm-hmm. you know, you're. Uh, being mentored by John Park, yeah. um, Q Fang, yeah. and two different worlds. You know, John Park's a, very much a painter, concept artist. Right. Q Fang's specifically a character artist yeah. um, or designer. So uh, let me just actually pull this stuff up. Yeah, Brian Matias as well, actually. M A T Y A S. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. He's on Mandalorian. Yeah, he, he was great uh, for the film. Like, I did uh, more of a film style in the beginning. Right. And he, Brian is just an amazing designer. Any sort of success I have, by the way, is just is just it's not even me it's just because yeah. of them you know what i mean um and so yeah so i have sort of um deprecated my my film style stuff and sort of moved over into more of a game style uh the reason for that is just because i have more of an affinity i think towards this sort of more of a style it's just more of me it's more where my heart is i wish you had your older stuff to compare on here, yeah you know? yeah thank god we don't have that <laughs> come on dude <laughs> Yeah, uh, but but no, the the I I honestly wouldn't I'd be fine with showing it because the truth is like we all started somewhere, and in fact I think I have way way more way farther to go. You right, know, like right. I I'm got a lot more growth to do. So you if know? you if you don't mind, can you want to just click through this and then kind of just talk sure. about what we have here? Yeah, absolutely. So the idea behind this character was that it was. Um, you know, a Maori or Polynesian inspired fisherman that takes contamination from the sea and uses it against his enemies. Cool. So, you know, in this regard too, I just wanted to touch on something that I sort of, we can talk about design, which I think could be kind of yeah, helpful sure. and interesting to, to the viewers, but um, shout out to the viewers. But, uh, <laughs> but I think like, obviously like when the design is done, like one of the things I, I'm sort of striving to do is to sort of say something okay. with my art, you know? And, um, and so, you know, like this sort of has an environmental thing. And I thought that was sort of a nice little subtext that might not be overt in the work itself, but nonetheless. So, yeah, so this character was inspired by that idea. And what you see here is, you know, obviously the end result of a lot of um, trial. So these are yeah. sort of some thumbnails. Now, these, of course, aren't the rough sketch. These are like cleaned up, um, mm. you know painted versions but i i start with a really rough sketch and, and when i start with the sketch what i'm really concerned with is a strong design mm-hmm. and I, I could talk about that now if you want yeah like the, design yeah those yeah three, so yeah. yeah for sure because i think 
I remember being in school and people would talk about designs all the time, like, oh, this is a this is a good design. And I always wondered what that meant, you know, because it was relatively vague and ambiguous. So I asked a lot of my instructors and it actually was John was one of the first people that were like, had a really concise answer John to Park. it. Yeah, right. Yeah. And that's just because it was, you know, I was really mentored by John before anyone else. And it really stuck with me and I sort of bastardize it a little bit and and used a mnemonic that really helps me remember because really what we're doing is really difficult mm -hmm. and um you know there's so much to consider and that mnemonic is uh you know again what makes a strong design is three components in my opinion and they all share the same amount of importance so you know 33.3 percent recursive <laughs> right yeah. Yeah. would be uh and these are in no particular order but it's feeling form and function so the function, for example, would be, do we have a character that is on land and do they have webbed feet? Then the mm -hmm. function, there's an issue there. Or if it's a robot that's controlled electronically, does it have an antenna? If it doesn't, there's a problem with the function there, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm using obvious examples, right. but there's more subtle examples that you can lose sight of, you know, especially when you're working with mech and things like that. Like, does it actually work? So that's, in my opinion, makes a good design, right? Can it function mm -hmm. properly? Is it functioning how it's supposed to? And then the second thing is feeling. In other words, is the theme that I'm going for coming across, right? Like the vibe right. of the character. And then the third thing is form. And so form is that massive umbrella of aesthetics that you learn in art school, you know, like one, two, three reads, mm -hmm. uh, you know, contrast of shape, contrast of value, detail value distribution, graphics, leading yeah. lines, all of that stuff. And there's like a list of like 50 things, yeah. you know, that, you know, you kind of get into the finer points. And in my opinion, uh, a lot of folks that, you know, most folks focus on that third thing. Like if you see a really good render. Very cool. Yes. Right, you know right. what I mean? So the, you know, the form is there like all that the umbrella they're they're trying to to make that work but mm. i think oftentimes what gets neglected is is the you know the feeling um and the function right so i really try to think of those three things to ensure that the design is strong and then of course in addition to being able to see the character from afar and instantly read who they are and what they do in particular especially with games so for example for this character i might say I want a character that um, you know uses a magic totem to attack enemies at close range. Okay, well, that's my sort of my sentence. And if I know that, you know, I can see the character and feel that uh, mm -hmm. right from just the initial glance, then I know it's a, a relatively successful design. And now, also in in these explorations here, what I've been getting into is sort of like the secondary forms as well. So instead of you know, once I get the silhouette. And breaking the silhouette and doing all of that reading well as well as I can then I'll try and go into the medium to smaller forms and one thing I'm really getting into is patterning so what I do here is like I'll take for example if you look at this uh, left hand side character um, I'll take uh, you know a pattern that is in the theme that I'm going for mm -hmm. so and then I will try to modify it to make it uh, more unique to the character or to more unique to the, the theme of the design. So to give you an right. example, uh, with this character, it was sort of a octopus secondary inspiration. Mm. So I'm using, you know, lines that are, you know, more flowing in certain areas. Even Com the smoke is tentacle-like. Exactly. Okay. So, yeah. So, uh, and then, but the pattern, what I did was I took a basically like a Maori pattern. Mm. And then I added more curvature to the lines and then I conform them to kind of feel more like an octopus tentacle. Okay. Right. Yeah, yeah. So the patterning is unique and it's bespoke to right. each character. Right. You know what I mean? Um, and so that's something that I've really been, been pumped on and, and getting into. You ever watch the uh, Maori haka? Oh yeah. Like, well, I used to play rugby. Oh, no kidding. Yeah. In oh. fact, I was on the, the junior uh, USA team oh. under 19s. And I had the haka performed at you. against me. Oh my god. And what you don't see when they perform the haka is when they jump at you at the end, they like actually talk trash in really? your ear. Yeah, it's crazy. They're like, I'm not gonna say what they say. Yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. in a New Zealand accent, it's really funny. Um that like one of the guys was like, You'll never be a good artist. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just kidding, you didn't say. Uh, but anyway, uh so yeah, so um and that really, you know, and we lost the game because yeah. he said that. But no, so anyway, so yeah, the, but that's that's what I was going for. And I, I love that culture too. I've actually been to New Zealand. It's such an amazing place. In fact, rugby is their national sport. Yeah. So Young a lot life. of this Yeah, so a lot of it, you know, was I wanna do I wanna do them a, a service by doing the, the best art I possibly it's can. Tribute, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So then here I wanted to show more of like an industrial design. 
type of vibe. Um, and this, of course, is like a lot of this is a practice and perspective, which I really struggle with. Uh, Looks good to me. Yeah, thanks, man. Um, and so I wanted to show, even though this game, you know, might not necessarily be a first person shooter, I just wanted to show that angle. You know, Q really helped out a lot with this. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things he said, which I thought was really awesome, was basically your detail distribution getting more detailed towards the front, which I'd never even considered before. So, like, you know, the focus of the player is, you know, what, what you're actually going to see through the screen is, right, right. you know, is a, especially in FPSs, it's a lot of it is the gun, you mm -hmm. know, so that design is, like, critical. But thinking through, like, actually how this worked and, like, how the actual tar ball got loaded into the thing and making sure that felt kind of chunky and game-like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, the actual yeah. shapes was, uh, was really... Um, you know, took a lot of trial and error. Mm. I think, you know, some of these forms might even feel a little elementary, but that's again, you know, because you're looking at this for, in a game where, you know, you're, you're looking at it at a certain size and I right. want to like consider that. So I want to ask a question. Mm -hmm. Now, earlier you mentioned, and from what I remember, your portfolio is more geared towards film. Yeah. So like ILM kind mm -hmm. of totally. uh, yeah, more realistic, less colorful and big shape. Right. Right. Uh, so you switched over to this mentality of going more towards games. Yep. Like colorful Overwatch, League of Legends kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, what would you say the main difference is that you had to learn and focus on and, and kind of learn from Q Fang and stuff? Like, oh, my gosh. There's so much. Yeah. I mean, every time that guy speaks, it's like, you know, it's, it's mind expanding, you mm -hmm. know, and then I take that with me for my next piece. Right. You know, so... But uh, I would say the biggest thing was d the major differences, like in film, you can have more subtlety. So like less silhouette breaks, less of a statement. Like if you look at this character, you know, I'm thinking like this character has to be red from a possible three quarter top down view, right. you know, depending on what kind of game you're making, you know, um, or, you know, if it's Overwatch, you know, from various different angles. But it's got to be a big statement when you're looking at, you know, a lot of moving parts. And that's another thing in animation, you know, you use contrast of movement. So if you want something to stand out, you really have to use uh. all of the, the tools of contrast to make sure that it reads. So essentially, it's a lesson in contrast, in my opinion, with film. I mean, depending on the film, you could have a lot of silhouette breaks yeah. depending on the film. But mostly, like, for example, if you look at the new Dune movie, which I know... Uh, you know, you may have done a trailer about, but uh, it's a good example of a really effective way to make it look boring. Yes, yeah. right. Yeah. Uh, very gray and yeah. and blurred out, and maybe it's a minimalist thing. Maybe the final movie will look great, but yeah, <laughs> absolutely. So you know, if it, but if you're doing, uh, yeah, if you're doing something for a film, obviously it has to be grounded in more realism and things like that. So you're just, I'd say, I would say that's the biggest thing is really pushing your designs, pushing your shapes, which is one of the reasons why I actually like games. Also, it, it's closer to animation where you're actually breathing life into your designs, mm -hmm. you know, ultimately, and you, you can actually control them, and that's a really intoxicating thing for me. You know what I mean? Also, I love games. You right. know, so, um, and, and film as well, obviously, sure, yeah. but, but I'd say that's the biggest difference. Yeah. If that uh, makes sense. I think if I had to choose, I mean, I'm, I'm working mostly independently for like on my own stuff. So, yeah. but if I had to choose, I'd prefer games over movies, mm -hmm. even though like for the most part, depending on the studio, movies tend to pay more, Yeah, but it's way more stressful. The turnaround times on things is just kind of, you know, at the whim of the directors, right. Right directors. And I don't know. yeah, no, I, I would agree with that for sure, man. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, I mean, games, you know, can can also have, you know, crunch and stuff, but so do films. You know, the thing, right. you know, again, like for me, it's more about really, I just want to be able to create with people that I'm inspired by. You right. know what I mean? And and they're, both genres provide that, you know, mm -hmm. but uh, it, it is interesting to see how the industry is changing, especially in terms of film. You know, a lot of stuff streaming now and, and the studios cha are changing, mm -hmm. you know, big time. So, Yeah. But anyway, that I hope that answers your question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do have another question. If I yeah, like, yeah, for sure. Uh, scrolling down, you can also see some more examples of the patterning from, uh, I think, the evergreen character. I did a lot yeah. of that as well. This here, so I look at that and I see this is stuff that I think is bolstered by your animation background. Yeah, you want to, you want to kind of talk about that? Yeah, or? for sure. This actually, to me, is one of the most fun parts of the process i would say this and iterating are my mm. two favorite parts mm. um but yeah you know like it i think you know one of the most important things for me with the character is and again this is synonymous with animation is breathing life into the character really kind of understanding like who this character is literally animating them yeah, yeah. and so so much or, of that yeah. yeah absolutely so so much of that is the way they move 
And so the reason that I'm showing these studies here is I wanted to actually show how the character would use the, the totem. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, we have three different movements here. So I'm thinking like in a riot style game where you may have, you know, um, three or four, you know, quote unquote special movements or an alt, you know, you're going to be able to see how that, you know, or just get some ideation into actually how the character would interact with the actual right. weapon, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and, as a sort of reminder, you're still working on a portfolio to apply to places, right? right. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, um, you know, I'm open to all opportunities. Yeah. You know, again, like my thing there is just to to make sure that it's with a cool group of yeah. people that that you know are, are good at what they do, and I want to work for the best and with the best, okay. and people I admire. And if you want to, oh yeah. So uh, yeah, so the idea for this one then was a schoolgirl who is. Uh, basically does like a science project and then she is she inadvertently opens up a portal to you know basically another dimension that you know this entity sort of ensnares her in making her a Manchurian candidate and so I kind of liked the juxtaposition of the harshness of the you know idea of the chains and things like that and the sort of the more industrial design mm -hmm. of the of certain elements with contrasting that with sort of like the softness of a Japanese school role. You know? Okay. <laughs> sure. And and so um, I just like sort of the innocence combined with with that uh, design. And so oh, dude, these are cool. I, see, I haven't seen these yet. Yeah. So thanks. So for these, um, you know, again, it's just really exploratory. I was really trying to focus on the feeling here in these poses, which has has a huge impact on the pose itself. On you know um, the silhouette of the mm. character, like the reads, and just giving different ideas you know, in case uh, the director might want to go in, in a different, um, you know, direction just to show that range. Um, you know, these ended up feeling like almost like skins of the same character, mm -hmm. which is cool. Actually, throughout the portfolio, I wanted to show vastly different, like a wide range of explorations and then also more narrow, which in this case it sort of is in terms of, you know, costuming and whatnot. Yeah. So I ended up going with uh, basically a combination of these two and this one, like these three right here. Um, you know, I took elements that I liked and which actually, I don't know how you feel about this, but you know, the Frankenstein design where you kind of take elements yeah. and put them together. Yeah, yeah. I think that can be very risky, you know? Sure. Um, in this case, I think it, it worked, uh, but I try to avoid that where I can, hmm. you know what I mean? Cause it, it, I feel like if you take too many, it can start right, to feel right, right. disconnected. You know? I mean, it's like doing a wardrobe. Like if you're going to wear too many different parts of, like, yeah. you know, Part of a tuxedo, but like pants of a suit, right? It doesn't work. Yeah, yeah. Um, but you know, and then that's I think something you develop in terms of taste. Mm -hmm. So yeah, for sure. Uh, but personally, I think each each one of these is a valid standalone design. But I too agree. It's like pull out, you know, give it a shot to do another ideation pass where you pull out the best parts of the things and see what happens. And if it's too Frankenstein and it just feels kind of forced, then yeah, I would, I would back off. Yeah, yeah, for sure, man. So, um, yeah, then this one, you know, I wanted to kind of show how the thing works, sort of the same philosophy I had with, with all of the designs, just to kind of give a sense of like, you know, also just a heads up to like the VFX artists or to the modelers or whoever else might be touching this asset. Like, you know, hear a little bit about how she moves. I thought it could be kind of cool to have her literally be like subject to the chains. So she's like, like just limp and the chains are like almost walking for her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought that could kind of be a cool idea. So what's um, interesting, uh, because of your experience, you're aware that there's even a VFX team. Yeah. Right? You know, yeah. I think a lot of people making portfolios, they, of course, you do see, you know, other sheets of like animation or something. Mm -hmm. like that. But I think a lot of people are somewhat misled and, and like we said earlier, just doing the hero shot yeah. of like, you know, the front and back and, um, and fueled and kind of driven by the cool factor. Mm -hmm. Like... Like we said earlier, um, if if you're, you know, if you go to our station and like see very inspirational things, there's a lot of times where you're like, that that's really cool, right? Yeah. Like save, yeah. And then you start taking the elements that make it cool, uh, and then you do it in your own art. Fair enough, right? Um, but it's driven by cool, right? That's that's kind of a problem, yeah. Um, and going back to your uh, three feeling, function, and form. Mm -hmm. um, the, the the function there is just cool, right? right. Or, or the feeling there is just cool. Right. But you going into this and saying, well, the feeling is a bit like, 
you know, limp and, and stuff. And how do you show that? And, and the, the feeling with the Maori guy, it's like uh, he's he's got, you know, that haka energy. But at mm-hmm. the same time, his weapon is kind of based on um, like the pollution, right? Yeah, and so right. The, the dead fish are maybe, you know, getting revenge on humans. Right. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so it, it's really, really cool to see it's not just about cool despite yeah. my saying it's cool to see it yeah. yeah yeah no doubt well i mean ideally you have both you know right. you have a really cohesive design that is also cool yeah but i think uh, yeah what's lost on a lot of folks uh maybe that's beginning is that idea like uh well i'm just gonna make another neat mech right, and then right, really right. it's not inspired by an underlying theme or idea and again like what i find cool is who is this character and is that right, coming right, across? Right, right. You know what I mean? To me, that's really where the life comes about and that makes the coolest designs. Does that make sense? So I think they're for kind sure. of synonymous in a way. Expressions, nice. Yeah, so for this one, I tried to tried to do more of a loose vibe and that's the thing. That's one thing that I really want to work on is like being more effortless and more loose and I think, you know, hopefully that'll come with more time but that's one thing, you know, again, I admire in your work. Mm. Um, but I tried to loosen up the line just a little bit and it's still pretty darn tight. But, um, yeah, like I was trying to explore here her, uh, you know, obviously just her, her expressions or what, Hmm. because I was thinking too, like, I felt like this one needed an expression sheet because she's sort of, uh, not control. She's not, doesn't have her own facilities. She's controlled by something else. You know what I mean? So I, I did a little bit of having a little bit of walleye on the pupils here to sort of give a sort of a subjective sense of that. You know what I mean? Like you can a see here, a walleye. So in animation, it, actually one of the huge parts of animation is at the final phase when you're doing the face or some of the more refined details, one of the hardest things to, to wrangle to get the computer to do what you want it to do is the pupils. So making sure that those are in the right location, making right. sure they're looking at the correct location. Yeah. So I'm always very sensitive to that. And in fact, what you would ideally with a normal character that's you know cogent and just normal, you would have a slight cross eye almost indiscernible right. yeah, yeah. but because we don't look at stuff like this we look at stuff right like this. yeah so it right. makes them feel almost more intelligent in a way or just aware hmm. and so in this character like i wanted to make them less aware so i had hmm. the eye the pupils just slightly walleye because the effects of the extra dimensional thing is exactly just messing with her right. psyche or something right and so kind of working through like how would a walleye character actually emote you know, mm-hmm. um, I really wanted to just kind of explore that. So that's what this page is about. So, oh. oh, that's just changing the size. My bad. Dude, I like how you have 1,300 <laughs> screens. <laughs> I mean, oh yeah. my God. No, like your, your, what are you, alarms or alerts or whatever? Like you have on our station? Hmm? Oh, oh, here. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I've never clicked that before. That's so crazy, man. Oh. Like I get like two and I'm like, I can't believe you like my work. Like, thank you. I look at it immediately. <laughs> You know, you have like a billion. Uh, so this was actually the piece that I saw that 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 first got my attention uh, on your yeah. Instagram. Yeah. Uh, um, that I was like, wait, because I like I I I scrolled past that. I liked it. I'm like, yeah, it's really cool. Who did that? I look Ben. Really? Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Thanks, man. Yeah. So this piece, um, you know, again, like this was actually one of the earlier pieces I did. Um, this took a long time to kind of flesh out. You know. And really bounced this one off cue a lot. He was a huge help in this one. A um, lot of struggles with this one for sure. Um, you know, the the big thing was trying to get the boar to have a really appealing, like stylized vibe. Hmm. And um, also just the, I learned a lot actually from the, trying to figure out the more industrial design of the actual hard surface shapes of this, you know, this this design of his arm. And I kind of wanted it to go medium a little bit bigger medium and then biggest statement here so almost one two three yeah but then juxtaposed with smaller tertiary reeds mind if i sketch over it not at all yeah do it uh i just i'm curious to try some things we'll get to the iterations in a moment yeah because those those iterations actually i have um sorry to just jump in and give it no do it do it man (laughs) yeah i'm always open to uh to improvements, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to make the design as strong as it possibly can be. From one professional to another. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, I think, you know, obviously it's, it's really good. Okay, cool. So we're done. And yeah. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Oh, yeah, the compliment sandwich. So, right. first apologies. Yeah, what, what's, the, what's the thing <laughs> after that? Uh, right, right. Uh, I'm just going to point out what's not working for me. Yeah. Um, and it's that this distance is like, it's very similar throughout oh yeah huh. right 
and I would find a way to vary that. And like, yeah, for sure. Uh, much like you know the the classic wave or whatever. Um, I would probably like let it go thin, but like swell somehow up here and mm. then meet down here because you want it to lead this totally. way. Totally. Right? Yeah. And so totally. what I what I would do is probably take that bore head, with the you know something like that, and then put that down over here a little bit, maybe even make it slightly smaller, mm. and that. The feature of him is the scapula of, or you know, something right over here. Yeah, yeah. That peeks out. Yeah, that's cool. I um, like that. And you, would you actually occlude the boar head there too? I don't know. I, I might even just have the boar head look away, mm. maybe towards the enemies or something. Yeah. Because it might end up competing with his face. Because right yeah, now, no that's more interesting. It is. Face. You're right. Yeah. For um, sure. That's the read. So one way or another, uh, reduce the equalness of, of this, or at least emphasize the peaks and valleys of, of the width. Right, no doubt. Um, like, granted, it does start off small and, and go big, but it's too too even for now. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Also, yeah, it's kind of um, like if you look, now that you mention it, you know, when you look at the, the line of that form, it's mm -hmm. almost like too um, straightforward, I guess is the right word. There's no, like, a line acceleration at all. Exactly, you exactly. Know, yeah. It's, it's a very safe acceleration. Right, yeah, um, yeah, for sure. No, um, that's a really great note. And then earlier you mentioned the uh, mediums of here. Mm -hmm. I think they're... Just a bit too close in size. No doubt. I knew you'd um, say that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, which is fine, but I think, you know, getting this to uh, peak over here, then direct our eye into there. Like, so peak over there. Yeah. Fall like a roller coaster over here. Um, maybe even make this really big, mm. and then this one small. Or yeah, the opposite. Right, right. You make this one small, and that one really big. Right. Yeah, that's cool. And man. so basically what that does is it makes a nice peak there, another valley down here, then back up again, mm -hmm. you know, kind of letting us imagine it like a ski slope. Like if, if um, you know, here's the ski lift, you're all the way up here. Um, if we just put a blanket on this, it kind of has something like that. Right. Yeah. You know, it's, you know, much of a more of a bunny hill. Right. Right. Yeah. But if you get like, a, you know, a small start and then a big leap here then small again the blanket does this kind of thing where it has these peaks and valleys yeah and that makes the pushing the silhouette far more interesting and much more dynamic too yeah, yeah. yeah that's awesome yeah those are great yeah. notes man for sure might even make that belt thing a little bit bigger yeah also you could make like by doing that line especially on that secondary piece you could push the idea of the the sort of the cultural theme that's mm. influencing this like i like that line actually that you just like effortless oh through. the yeah yeah you know what i mean but it almost looks like a stupa you know what I mean? Like you could push that. You know, like the the top of the religious towers in the Himalayas. I'm gonna pretend I know what that is. So. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, cool. I'll probably have yeah. to look it up. Um, what I do like, and this is not just the compliment sandwich part, but you mm -hmm. know, you do have this uh, this swirl thing that mm -hmm. is kind of repeated on his head on the yeah. side there. It's somewhat repeated there, repeated in the tattoo. That's great. Um, I might make some kind of smoke that shares oh, that yeah. same design language that's cool yeah um and then like you could even take the peaks and valleys of what you have going mm. here and let that be the guide for the shape of the boar totally you know you, you just yeah come on <laughs> is right? this 2020 by the way Photoshop? no it's 2018 yeah i like that too i have the 2020 it just um, kept crashing yeah 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 it's and crazy. like the drivers are weird and the yeah the sensitive, yeah no but that's awesome dude that's a mm. really great note too yeah, to kind of unify that form language there. Right, right, right. Yeah, that's good. Did you ever have Tim Flattery as a teacher? No. Okay. Yeah, he has a really great lesson on uh, rhythm, harmony, balance, continuity, mm -hmm. repetition, that kind of stuff. Dude, I think that's so important. That's something I'm really trying to get better at. Yeah. You know? You could even put that swirl shape here. Oh, yeah, and, totally. And oh, man, there's all these missed opportunities. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean. Yeah, dang, that's a really good point. Also, maybe in the boots, the side of the boots as well, like near the ankle. Like some patterning there, or even on the rope. Yeah, yeah, on the boots for sure. Yeah, like, you know. And it's like if you have um, the, when I taught this, I this concept. It's like mm. if you have. Um, we're turning this into like a full lesson here. No, it's cool. Um, it's, it's also I think helpful for the yeah 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 other yeah. artists. You know, that's why I do it. So if you have like a, a map, you're looking down, yeah. and you're like, okay, well, we have three islands. You have a you know, we talk about the big, medium, and then the small. Um, what that does is it creates rhythm. 
leading our eye there and maybe yeah. coming back. It doesn't have to be that obvious or direct. Um, let's say we, we say, okay, well, now what? Well, we want to subdivide the island with um, information. Let's put some trees. Let's get some dark green trees. All right? Uh, we got, you know, some... We're looking from top down. We have a... a here, let me just kind of do that again. You have a big tree uh, group cluster, a medium cluster, and a small cluster. So that same thing is just scaled uh, down like a fractal. Mm -hmm. We have big, medium, right. small, big, medium, small, and they connect to it. And, and, and for some reason, that's appealing, right? Yeah, it's cool. Um, but that creates its own design language. And let's do a little little red fire bush or whatever. You know, maybe it's autumn and whatever. So now we have like this kind of uh, subtle, smaller detail, right? Uh, now we go to the other islands and we say, well, this is all one design. The mistake would be, okay, here we're gonna do square trees, right? Or, uh, or a pattern that, that doesn't feel like it's similar to this, that lacks harmony. Um, what we wanna do is uh, take that same idea that we have here big, medium, small, with those circular top-down trees and let that be continuous. Otherwise, mm -hmm. if we go over here and make triangle uh, trees from top-down, it doesn't mix, or maybe they're a different color. Or, you know, over here they're a swirl, but over here they're a triangle. Um, so how does that apply to here? It's like, right. you know, you have the swirl thing over here, but if you were to make the, the bore, like, square... Mm. Uh, it's a missed opportunity. Yeah. So harmony is taking an element, uh, in the case of the islands, it's that round tree cluster, mm -hmm. and letting it go to the other places of your piece. Right. Um, and uh, kind of letting that bleed into everything you do for that design. You don't have to do, do it too over the top, but uh, that's just kind of the mentality of, of uh, subtle details that could just show up in, in, the, in the smallest places of, of the design. Yeah, so, no doubt. Anyways. Yeah, and it makes it more cohesive. <laughs> yeah, yeah, dude, that's awesome, man. Thank you for that. Totally, that really you're welcome. So I'm gonna but do it over. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm just kidding. Man. But like, because you yeah. want to do a bunch of new characters. Yeah, so for it's sure, like, for sure, man. Maybe that could you know help a little bit. Yeah, no doubt. Um, yeah. So then, actually, along those lines, like, should I just go on? Yeah, keep going. Yeah. So like, th this was also a really crazy learning experience. And like I said, you know, this character was like. The first one I did that um, was in the series, the, the literally the first one okay. for my entire new portfolio. It's so. really good. Even these are all, all of them are valid. I love yeah. the top right one. That's yeah, thanks, man. Well, this is this is what's funny about this is actually this one is my favorite. Yeah, this one, and I learned a lot. I actually was talking to Brian about this, and he was really insightful. Brian about, Matthias. Yeah, yeah, about you know he's so good with like shape and and uh, just design in general, but he was talking about you know. Like if you look at this, it's actually you know like an almost like a I don't know what the right word is, but like an obtuse triangle, I guess you would call mm -hmm. it, like yeah. a thin triangle. And so there's a lot of um, you know I was thinking about that in these three, and then these three, not so much. Right. I wasn't. It wasn't really on the forefront of my mind. And I actually think it's really interesting. I've I've never really liked th these two, yeah. and even this one. And I'm like, huh, like why not? You know. Right. And it, that's what's so funny about design is like there's these subtle. In, in, in my humble opinion, it's like yeah. there's these subtle changes that can really make a lot a huge difference. So like, if you look at this one, like I think I did um, just for whatever happenstance of a reason, I, I was able to kind of get some nice shape variation and then also mm. the, the flowing of the this line and compared to like the straightness of the handle. And um, it was, it I liked how much it was pushed. But then with this one, it's like I had a missed opportunity where I could have Push this, in my opinion, way sure, more. Sure, it's also less of a dynamic of a pose. So yeah. I think for for the folks that might be like trying to learn, you know, um, I will try to avoid this, you know, in yeah. the future where I, I want to go closer to this. And so you can clearly see the difference between like the dynamicism of the pose, the mm -hmm. pushedness of the contrast of the shape. Sure, you know, the the contrast between straights and and curved line accelerations, and and it's just amazing how much big of a difference it makes, in my opinion. So that top left one, I. It's a, it's really really good. I can I can already imagine the the splash art of it. Right? Mm, He's already yeah. in the right pose. Yeah. It's very intimidating. The red lights. I think the reason I overlooked it and said that I really like the top right one is because um, my mind is is 
like tunnel visioning for like uh, theme and details, mm, right? Yeah. Um, and while the theme and detailing on the top left is great, the the Arabianness on the top right, mm, it's yeah. like oh, hey, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it's like playing to the audience, <laughs> yeah, right? yeah. Like yeah, it's kind of like an Arabian Nights kind of uh, phantom ghost gin situation. Yeah. Um, but you're right. I think the top left one as a design. Uh, it's very effective, and, and yeah. that, that pose is so cool. Yeah, thanks. And I, I put a lot of thought into you know the the influence of the the armor pieces and the weapon and stuff. But the mm. other thing I think it's important to point out too here is like I'm not like these this drawing is not really fleshed out in terms of like the line. I'm not really paying attention to like the line quality or the yeah, line weights to, or yeah. anything. Yeah, it's yeah. more about you know just the idea mm -hmm. you know and getting that across. In fact, I was reading the. Um, the Blizzard Art of book for Overwatch, and yeah. they had this one drawing of Tracer, which was one of their early characters, and mm -hmm. it was literally like a chicken scratch. But the yeah. idea was there, and I was like, "Whoa!" Yeah. Like I think a lot of uh, a lot of folks that are learning, um, you know, are focused more on the you know quality of the render and the drawing, and really, it's mostly about the idea. Because I know that, like, even if I have to struggle through it, I eventually will be able to get to a place where it's presentable. You know what I mean? Right. But the idea has to be sound. You know, having said that, I, I would love to see some of your scratches on in these posts. Yeah, those, yeah, those scribbles for sure. like even napkin sketches. Yeah, like, no doubt. Because you're you're an artist. When you see mm -hmm. that, you love it, right? Yeah. Art directors are just like you. You know. So yeah, no doubt. In fact, I'm trying to even think, man. I might have my sketchbook that I can mm -hmm. show. You know, some new characters that I'm working on. I would love to see that. Yeah. So stay tuned yeah. to my art station. You know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like in fact, I think I might even have some right here, dude. Nice. Um. Okay, so here's a good example. Yeah, let's actually just switch the camera real quick. So, okay, so this I'm one... Hold it up to the... Yeah, so I'm not even sure if I'm going to use this, but you can see... Let it focus, yeah. Yeah. So here, so ignore these dudes. Mm. Uh, but this character, I'm thinking, like, could be a cool thing, right? And this is just an initial idea. Yeah. And then I hate it. Right. Okay. And so I'm like, okay, but I'm going to take that idea of a character yeah. that's sort of tall, statuesque, with mm -hmm. these sort of like tendrils that has this big gun. I might not even use this, but then I thought, okay, well, I'm going to give it more of a dynamic pose, and this is really rough, right? And then I'm thinking like, okay, what about her face? And then I'm like, oh, okay, cool. Would it, it would be cool if she had like a Swedish, Swedish theme? So if you look at that there. You know, I'm like, okay, well, maybe we could do like the Swedish flag. So mm -hmm. I'm really trying to figure out like how her gun is going to work here. Um, you know, here's an example of like, I'm thinking like, okay, her, her like, how, what is her glove going to look like? Uh, my face is getting wrecked. Sorry. Yeah, there you go. And like, what's, what is the gun going to look like? Where's mm -hmm. the gun there? Like yeah. That. Yeah. So I'm kind of playing with those shapes. And then here's a drawing of like, the, um, you know, the tendril, like how to put it in the center of the. Sorry, dude. That's yeah, all good. Whatever. Whatever. <laughs> yeah. Idea. So yeah. Um, yeah, and so you know, like I'm really just fleshing out the design. That's a full sketchbook. Yeah, yeah. and then um, I did like a lot of mechanical, like you know, studies of the limbs and how those will work. You know, so there's like a lot of thought that goes into it. Mm. And then I have a larger sketchbook with even more of them, you know, so. Are you the same way where most of my best ideas come in two places? When I'm running or like jogging mm -hmm. or working out? Yeah. Or if I'm like uh, taking a really long hot shower? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that's really interesting. Actually, my best ideas come from right when I'm in the state between waking and not awake. It's really okay, weird. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, like I, I think a lot... Of, I don't know if it's because my mind is so relaxed or yeah. whatever, but I start to have ideas that just... I mean, I literally, like there's Germany, like in uh, with the, you know, the Polynesian type of mm -hmm. design. Like that that came to me in that state. I was like... And oftentimes, like I'll maybe come partway through a design. Like right now, I just showed you... I'm not even... I'm just starting that idea, you know? And it will, it will change greatly mm -hmm. over time. And then, like, I'll be thinking through a problem, like, how could I solve this, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, how could I infuse, like, you know, there, there might be a, an issue with part of the design. And then sometimes when I'm in that state, I'll find the solution for some reason. You know what I mean? Like, my brain will make the connection in that state. It's really weird. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, totally. The, the creative process is kind of, you know, at, at first, it's very rigid. 
when you're trying to make something mm-hmm. on purpose. Yeah. But when you take that, I want to make it good on purpose out of the equation and you, you trust the process. Yeah. That kind of, uh, op- when you get yourself out of the way, it opens up the space for intuition to mm-hmm. actually happen. Yeah. It's the intuition that you got to trust. After, of course, you've done enough training. But, uh, you know, it, overthinking is, is going to really get in the way. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Um, yeah. So we could keep going and looking at the rest of these. Uh, well, we are kind of yeah, no worries. deep in the thing. Um, the, again, these are all just friggin' awesome. I, I'm so happy to see this jump in, in skill level. Yeah, man. Um, yeah, and I'm excited to get even better, you know? Yeah. And... Oh, man. I really love the uh, shape design of like the smoke and the FX and stuff. Oh, yeah, thanks. Are, man, and your faces are getting much better. Yeah, I struggled yeah. with that. It, it's so strange because, like, um, I mean, like, you're, you're already a professional in animation. If you, if you wanted to, you could say, all right, I give up on this. I'm just going to go back to animating. Yeah. It's stable, blah, blah, blah. But it's, it's really cool that you're like, I want to be a professional at something else in the same field, but yeah. like, man, it's just cool to see that ambition. Yeah, can I say something about that? Yeah, of course. Yeah, so when I was when I was born, I feel like I was came out of the womb doing this, and I think that you know, or the desire to do it and uh, of art, and world, yeah, world just building. being an yeah, artist, okay. yeah. and I feel like I was born to do it. You know, I talked about like the Warhammer thing, mm-hmm. um, and I don't, I just. You know, I don't mean to sound like egotistical or whatever, but I just love it, you know, mm. and... Um, We're allowed to think, have e- self-worth, you know? Yeah, I was going to say, yeah, I mean... No, I, you're being arrogant. Yeah, yeah, I just, I have always felt like, you know, it's sort of what I've been put here to do. And um, I started, I had, you know, when I didn't have any inhibitions, when I was very young, you know, like five, you know, I was just painting all the time. My uncle is a painter and I would go to his studio in South Africa and I've painted... You know, when, when, yeah, I've only been there twice, but you know, mm. I, I just, I always loved it. And, um, and I think I, I was actually along these lines, forgive me to digress here, but I, I was watching this documentary where there was an executioner and he gave up the job after 20 years and they asked him why. And he said, because I asked myself how I wanted to live my dash. And they were like, what do you mean live your dash? And he said, well, dash? yeah. So yeah. on a tombstone, you know, you have the year you're born and the year you die. And then in the middle is the dash. Oh, so, that's cool. You know, how do you want to fill that dash? Yeah. And so what happened to me was, and I, I want to, you know, just hopefully say this so that other people that might be young or just learning yeah, can yeah. benefit from it, is that I got to a point where, you know, I, when I was in school, I didn't really have a lot of art encouragement in school. Um, Most people don't. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and like they were, in fact, they would admonish me for drawing in the margins, and that's really what I should have been doing the whole time. Oh, for sure. And so I bought into the starving artist idea, right, which is so not true. And so for anyone out there who has parents that are, you know, admonishing them for pursuing art, I just want to remind people, like, Steve Jobs is a designer, you know, John Lasseter is an animator, Brad Bird's an animator, mm-hmm. you know, um, uh, what's his name that did uh, Alice in Wonderland? Tim Burton, you mm-hmm. know, is an animator. Like there are tons of artists out there that make a great living. You know, my friend Penn Ward, you know, he he made Adventure Time, you know, mm-hmm. and and it's like, you know, they, they folks, you can you can pursue your passion and have a have a voice and become wealthy from it. You know what I mean? So, and by the way, the, the goal for me is not to become wealthy, but the idea that you are going to starve as an artist is, is I just yeah, yeah. patently reject that. It's just yeah, not true. Sure. There are more opportunities now than ever before. I mean, it yeah. is, there is a worldwide competition now, but you also have the ability to learn more than ever. Like I said, right. you have access to geniuses, you know? Um, so today, so living legends, you know? And so I just wanted to say, like, for me, what I did, one of the biggest mistakes was I did was I believed it. I believed in the starving artist paradigm and I put the pen down for a long time and I tried to do other things. The military, you know, I was in sales for a hot minute and it just wasn't me. It just didn't work out. And I'm glad I did those things. At the same time, I wish I had never stopped, you know, because I looked at colleagues like Joe Pitt and people like when I was working in certain studios and they Mm. never stopped and they were just so that much more amazing. You know, so yeah, I would yeah. just say if you have a passion for it, my only you know suggestion would be please, you know, for the love of us all, don't give up because you have a voice <laughs> right, that right. we all want to hear. You know what I mean? Absolutely. And you know, we're we're all artists here, and um, you know, I, I I just hope people learn from my mistake and they they don't give up. You know what I mean? Honestly, uh, you have a lot of 
stories and experience to share. Mm. Um, and I know we talked about this before, but um, prior to the, the recording this, but you got to make a channel or something. Like, oh, you, you know, I, I'm, you know, it's very. You're a good storyteller, right? Yeah, and thanks, you're very man. articulate. And so uh, it'd be great to. to I'm sure there's a lot of people who got a lot out of what you just said. Thanks, man. Um, Where's your tip jar? <laughs> <laughs> but no, you know, look, uh, if if folks would be interested in that, I'd love to hear from you know the the your, your viewers and mm-hmm. you know write in the comments like if you yeah. if you would like to see that you know I'd love to, to you know, I, yeah, see yeah. what see what folks think you know and I appreciate the compliment you know Absolutely. Um, maybe one day yeah. you know so Ben Carr the YouTube channel yeah <laughs> yeah right yeah Sergeant we'll, zero we'll, subscribers. We'll, we'll, <laughs> I'm sure we'll... Negative five subscribers. Well, yeah, yeah you, okay. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, I, I think it's important to lay out what your background is because uh, I'm sure there's a lot of students listening. Mm. Um, and I think what, what I want to get into is talking about the education side of things. Absolutely. Art yeah. School, Art Center, because uh, both you and I were... Well, you, I was a student at Art Center, but so were you. I taught at Art Center, so did you, mm-hmm. right? So we both have like that kind of experience from both sides of the right. coin so we'll, yeah. we'll talk about that in a moment yeah for sure um part of your background is also you were uh, a marine mm-hmm. which is so cool yeah <laughs> god this guy was telling me all these stories last night and i'm just like dude i wish like there was some kind of required <laughs> boot camp training for everyone because what you get out of it in terms of mentality discipline mm-hmm. uh i feel like a lot of us are, are missing especially when i was at art center i was i was lazy you know yeah granted i did the work but it was always last minute or i didn't take it seriously enough and i could and i, I as much as i learned i could have been more effective right? right so you know that was that was really cool and and you so you were a marine not army not Navy. you were yeah marine you corps, want to talk yeah. about that a little bit yeah, yeah. absolutely yeah. so to your point like i think you know art uh, the way i view it particularly you know you're talking about from a student perspective is it's a uh, Basically, it's like a road, you know? Right, of course. And, um, you know, if you work hard, you're going to be able to go farther down that road. And so hard work to me is sort of the the underpinning of any kind of success. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, I l- really learned that in the Marines. You know, things you think you can't do or might be like long, treacherous roads, you actually can if you just yeah. put your head down and just take the next thing, you know? Right. Um, Any examples of like uh, like that? What was it the stairway to heaven thing or anything? Yeah, like that? yeah. So that's a good example. <laughs> like, yeah, I mean, the entire process of of being in the military was, you know, they tried to instill in you a sense of, you know, confidence, overcoming obstacles, and things yeah, like yeah. that. Um, and one of them was the stairway to heaven, where you know it's just basically this huge, you know, it's like a story high. It's like basically a, a you know, like a ladder. Essentially, it's okay. a humongous ladder, and it's to the point where you know if you if you're gonna climb the rung of the ladder you have to actually use both hands and legs to kind of you know What's pull yourself over it stairway to heaven I yeah mean, and uh, really people scary. people would fall off it all the time and break their legs and things like that however most you know this one yeah there you go all right, let's just... um and yeah there's no harnesses or anything like that yeah. and so you know when you it, this was a small part of the training but when you get down from it you just feel like oh wow you know I didn't think I could right. do that, and I did. So they kind know. of scare you about it. First, oh yeah, right? for sure. Yeah, we saw a lot of gnarly pictures. Oh, um, man. But yeah, you know, I yeah. think um, yeah, there were there were so many takeaways that I learned there. You know, just um, even you know little things like holding your head up high. Uh, you know, the training is is really great for just personal development. You know, the being take- able to have respect for yourself and others. They teach you to you know right love your mom. You know, yeah. really like it's That's a lot great. of a lot of great lessons. Yeah, the the takeaway I got from the stories you were telling me yesterday is, you know, when you're on a journey of learning something, there's actually a need for some kind of stress. That right. stress kind of puts you in a mode. Maybe your adrenaline's higher. Maybe you're like your senses are heightened. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Um, how do you think that translates over to to learning art? Because I, I I saw your work maybe a year ago. It was good. Yeah. but not as good as it was now. And I know yeah. how hardworking you are. The studies you put in, you ask questions, you listen to critique. Mm-hmm. Um, and like you said in my class, and every time I told you to do something, uh, you did it. It was, yeah. it was really cool. Right. <laughs> uh, so how, how does how does that translate over to uh, your learning process in terms of where were you stressed out with your right. learning? Um, you know, what stresses did you have? Uh, yeah. Because actually, and actually what I'll do is have the artwork played. Thanks for wearing my pin, by the way. <laughs> oh, yeah, of course, man. No problem. Yeah, yeah I got to represent. Yeah. Yeah, no, absolutely. Stress, uh, you know, 
was ubiquitous there. I mean, they, for example, uh, they would do what they call dressing you by the numbers. So they would use time constraints to induce stress intentionally. Right. So everything had an intention, you know? Okay. Um, and when, you know, again, like having that stress, I actually feel like is, you know, it's a good thing because you learn techniques to try and overcome it. Okay. And yeah. I feel like today um, there's a relatively, you know, there's an interesting approach in schools where I think they focus more on the feelings of the student rather than yeah. the actual, uh, you know what I mean? The as, a, as a teacher, I'm guilty yeah. of that because I'm right. always like making sure, you know, with the compliment sandwich, like, oh, this is working really great here. Right. Work on this, but you're really great, you know, because yeah, it's like yeah. I'm that I'm sensitive, you know. Right. And so I, in a way, I kind of want to treat them how I want, I want it to be treated. But there is a, a certainly merit to just straightforward saying this isn't working try this maybe this will be better look right. at that yeah yeah like absolutely i think um ideally like what i would like to focus on is growth rather than the way you feel and this yeah, may yeah. be a little polarizing but yeah, that's fine you know the truth is um in my opinion like in fact when i receive critique i would much rather have people not take my feelings into consideration okay, and i feel yeah. like what happens is uh most of the time not all the time right but Folks are, especially as artists, you know, we're very sensitive. I myself am sensitive. So when I'm receiving, um, you know, or giving a critique, it's really easy to fall into the trap of, I don't want to hurt this person's feelings. Yeah, fair right? enough. Yeah. Yeah. And that's why I think as artists, it's it's essential that we, we treat each other with integrity yeah. out of respect for each other. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, also understanding that if you give me a critique and, you know, it's honest and, and straightforward and also importantly constructive, you know. Right, right that then, uh, you know, I understand that that's a subjective opinion, mm. you know? So ideally you have somebody that you really trust right. to give you a strong objective opinion uh -huh. that, um, you know, is then either taken to heart or not. Right. But nonetheless, I shouldn't, my feelings shouldn't be into that consideration because as we were talking about, you know, a little bit yesterday that in my opinion, you know, the compliment sandwich is a little weird one because everyone knows about it. Right. So I'm just going to disregard yeah. your, your yeah, positive yeah. things and only yeah, take yeah. away the negative. Sure. Right. So that I can grow from it. Right. You know, I don't think we should be coddling folks. Right. You know what I mean? I think if we look at it on a, on a spectrum, you have one extreme is like special forces, Navy SEALs training. Yeah. Right. There's your, you gotta, you gotta just do the stuff. Right. Right. On the other end is like a daycare. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. And it's yeah. like, you know, there's, you know, nap time snacks and like, right. oh, are you okay? I understand there's a need, need for both. But I think somewhere in between is kind of like a sweet spot because um, from your training, you're able to just kind of see through the BS and be like, just just give it to me straight, you know. But a lot of people aren't there yet. So I think a little so, bit of both is... You know, absolutely. Yeah, that's a great point. Like, yeah. I, I would never want to, like, crush somebody's... Right, that's the, the thing. The innards yeah. of their soul, you know. And, but, <laughs> yeah. I, but I do think, like, you know, what I see is there's more of a care of, you know, sort of like, are you okay kind right. of thing. Yeah. And, you know... Understandable. Really, but, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And But the, the, the truth is, like, you know, I don't want to sound like hardcore or whatever, you know, <laughs> but, but nature doesn't really care about your feelings. Right, right, right. You know, right, right. It's, it's more about what you do, which yeah. is really important. So, I mean, I, I know that also that there are people struggling out there. I myself have had to deal with a lot of struggles, anxiety, right, right, things right. like that. Um, you go to therapy and stuff. And like, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. You know, Same, yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I promote that. I think anything you can do to maintain your, you know, to be as healthy as possible is yeah. always a good thing. And, and so in spite of those struggles, though, I recognize that there is an objective output to what we do. It's like right, right, whether right. You, you either you can produce or not. And so my feelings have nothing to do with that. Like nature is not going to provide me a job right. if, I, if I'm too sad. I mean, I have to yeah. take care of that or whatever mm -hmm. and then do the work. The work is the most important thing. Exactly. Yeah. And I think the reason I brought up this whole topic uh, relating to stress and uh, daycare versus Navy SEALs, uh, going back to having been students, also teaching Art Center. Yeah. What was your experience like teaching there? Because it was recent, right? Yeah. And I think you agree with me when I when people ask me, like, hey, should I go to Art Center? Should I go to Art Center? I usually say no. Yeah. Like, you know, there's much better options right now mm -hmm. in terms of finances. If you can afford it and you're there, fine, right? Yeah. But... Um, like, I remember when I started teaching there, there was a meeting before the semester started. And, you know, all the new faculty had to go there. And, well, and when I was a student there, it was kind of hardcore, right? Yeah. Um, and, and not to be like, you know, it used to be better, but whatever. Um, it was tough. I, th I was probably 
it was probably too tough because it over prepared me from the for for the actual studio life. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think it was good for me. But what they told us at the meeting was like they said, "Hey, look, our demographic is younger. They're more like 21, 22, 20, right, or right out of high school. Mm-hmm. So we're doing like a curriculum wide thing where we're making things easier, yeah, less work. Uh, you know, you, like you said, consider more about." The feelings, and I care about, and I empathize with people's feelings, right? Right. I'm yeah, an empath. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's Me like too. I can sense Me too, people for sure, and how they feel. But the thing is, like, when I heard them say that, I'm like, "What? Hard, easier?" <laughs> and I, and I, from when I taught my class, I still taught it the way it was for me. It's like, yeah. No, I know what you get out of doing this much work. Yeah. If I do it by half and say, "Okay, let's," you know, we want to be relaxed when we're doing this. Right. You you can still learn, but. Not as effectively. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, first of all, just as an instructor, to that point, it's a great question. Yeah. Um, an important one, I think, for students, you know, to 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 think about. Um, yeah, as an instructor, I just want to say I love my students. Yeah, all my students yeah. were amazing. It's same, like, same. Yeah, you know, like the uh, shout out, you know, like the, the <laughs> they were so, um, and one of the things I really appreciated about Art Center in particular, like the students, was there is a high bar for excellence that they mm. try to achieve. And yeah, yeah. They also are super motivated, you know? Right. So I really appreciated that. Really? You know? What did you teach there? Oh, uh, so intro to, well, basically intro to animation. And um, yeah, that was my primary, primary class, but mm. also a little bit of Maya and things like that. Yeah. Um, also, you know, intro to CG, basically, cool. as well. But, anyways, um, yeah, so so I think, you know, it was the t- the teaching experience there was, yeah. So in, in regards to you know, the the meeting you had about you know making it easier, mm-hmm. um, I think that in Art Center's case, there was a tendency to make it. There's I, I think there's a, a little bit of a culture there where you're making it difficult for difficulty's sake. Hmm, yeah, which and, is kind of stupid. Yeah, like in my opinion, you know, like you are, we are trying to create the the best possible artists. Right. That's right. that's the goal. Right. And so we have to ask ourselves a question. You know, do we want to make it as does making it hard as possible mm. have that outcome? Right. And yeah. so you know, especially at least in the entertainment design track, I want to be clear too. We're only talking about that. We're not talking about the trans. True. Track or anything. Yeah. yeah. Transportation track. Right. Yeah. Um, but uh, but. You know, I don't necessarily agree that you make it hard for hard sake. If that was the case, you know, we could make it even harder. We could have people running 10 miles before, you know, yeah, or whatever, you know what I mean? Um, Or crossing a pit of alligators, you know, with a balance stick, you know what I mean? But so the truth is, I think there's a balance. And so I know for me, like I was so overworked um, in certain situations that I wasn't actually able to grow and develop. And your health suffered. Absolutely. So I think there's definitely a balance. Um, I actually think, you know, Brainstorm was mm-hmm. an amazing school that was, uh, you know, f- you know, far less expensive. And really what I would just advise all of the uh, students out there that might be watching this is try to, instead of looking at the institution, I would suggest that you look at the school, at the, the, the instructor, the instructor. Rather, you know, right. follow their work, find out if they're a good instructor. In my opinion, it's really hard to come by a person that is an, an artist, that's an amazing artist, that has a high level of skill in addition to also being a great instructor right. and they're like little gems in the rough you know yeah. they're these glistening gems and like i think there's a few of them out there like i think you are that not to blow smoke but you mm. know john park q fang oh my god man he's amazing yeah, yeah. so that's q i u fang yeah um and Brian, he works at overwatch as a character yeah artist. he's a senior concept designer at, at, at overwatch he is just absolutely amazing he's he's one of those rare ones and yeah. uh same thing with um with brian matias he did the mandalorian you know i've I've worked with them and not, not, you know, professionally, but I've been trained by them and mentored mm-hmm. by them. And, and th- those folks were amazing. You know, there's also, um, other folks that teach at brainstorm and cross pollinate. Like they also teach at, at art center. Yeah, yeah. Eric Ng, for example, is an mm-hmm. amazing instructor, uh, and artist as well. So, you know, there's, there's value there, but at the same time you want to follow the instructor. So when you look at where the great instructors are, you can tell a difference, right? right? So right. yeah, most of those folks teach at places like brainstorm. Right. So I would highly recommend. That's yeah, that's you that's always what I say actually. Yeah. Like, you know, there's brainstorm, C D A, uh, you know, places like that. But uh now you can take those classes online because you know because right. of the situation. Right. And so I had friends in London taking those brainstorm classes that they otherwise couldn't have. Like uh, I had a 
group of friends who are taking Q Fang's class yeah. from London and uh, Russia or whatever. So that was uh, that was really cool. Um, yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. Not to go. I mean, I think you know, Q is. I just can't say enough good things about him. Mm. He's just honestly, in my opinion, he's one of, if not the best game character art instructors and artists in the world. Right. Right. So if you consider that, like back in the day, you had you know the Italian Renaissance and people would go and train with you know the best painters. You know, maybe right, you, right. you have if you're lucky enough, you get an apprenticeship with Michelangelo. And today, for example, today with the internet, you know, you have the ability to do that just from your your desk, from your mm. home. You know, so it's such an amazing opportunity to be taught by somebody like Q or Brian or John. And you know, they're available to you for, you know, a reasonable amount of money. You right, know what right. I mean? Um, and and eight hundred dollars for a class. For yeah, and I mean, I, like in my opinion, like you know, Q and folks like him, you know, they've they've spent their whole life doing what they do to be good enough to be proficient enough at what they do. And you you are, you know, you are able to get to tap into that mm -hmm. for, you know, really a, a great value when you consider what you're getting. You know what I mean? Right. And then, by the way, compare that to, you know, the average cost for a class at a university of which you're going to be taking classes that aren't really relevant and not yeah. required. And, you know, we don't need a degree in this industry. Nope. So, you know, I mean... Depending with, on visa situation. But absolutely, yeah. 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 And or if you want to be an instructor, you know, right, it is right. better for you to have a degree, not necessarily required, but but definitely right. better. So there are advantages, but that's to the tune of a quarter million dollars. Like, you it's know, insane. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, um, I don't know. It's like I think each class boils down to be about five thousand dollars. So and especially imagine if you're taking a class that is irrelevant to what yeah. you want to do. Like history of modern art. Yeah, right. You like, know, not to say that there isn't value in that, but the way right. I, I, yeah, the way I, I want to learn to draw this, why? You know? Right. Well, and, and I look yeah. at it like, you know, we have a finite amount of time. Exactly. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, I mean, because everything you, you take a class on could benefit you artistically. Like, for mm -hmm. example, if I take a class on botany, I'm going to be able to sure. draw plants better. But is that the best use of my time? Sure. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, you know, if you want to do character design, and in fact, I would also say to the, the students out there, you know, that it's it's okay to experiment and in fact i encourage that in the beginning mm -hmm. but if you it, it is going to behoove you to kind of focus in on what you want to do you know what i mean like if you want to, what track you want to go in, especially if you want to work at one of the major studios so you right. know if you want to be uh you know environment designer it's a good thing to know that because then i know who to reach out to i know who to look for help i know what reference to look up you know what i mean yeah so yeah. i can kind of focus in on that right if that makes sense totally and uh having said all that and you don't have to go into too much detail or whatever but what was your experience as a student at Art Center? Okay, <laughs> details abound. Yeah, here, uh, yeah. yeah. So uh, my experience as a student was, you know, look, it, it's a, it's an institution, but it's just as I said. I mean, it's you know, it's got a great reputation, um, and there were amazing instructors there. Like mm -hmm. I mentioned, Eric, you know that yeah, yeah. that I really admire, and and um, you know, in fact, Q was a TA when I was there. Yeah. You know, so I, I got to learn from him. However, you know, um, those folks also teach at other schools, so. Right. Uh, you know, I just realized pretty quickly when I was there that there were other better options, you know. And by the way, like, this is also subject to change. It may mm, be that, yeah, yeah. Uh, that Art Center turns it around. By the way, I actually think they've made some great improvements from when I was there already. You know, okay, like, great. Uh, Guillaume has taken over as a director, at least in the entertainment side of things. And I, I think they've tightened up the curriculum a little bit. So they're That's taking good. less frivolous classes. Oh, good. Um, yeah, yeah. But, uh, yeah, I, I, I still, again, would just encourage folks to, to focus on the instructor right. rather than the, the school or the prestige of the, the university. Because, again, it doesn't really matter for our business at right. all. No one is going to look at your GPA. They're not going to look at where you went to school. They're going to look at your portfolio first. Do you and have great work, right? Be great to work with. Yeah, that's right. Also, I, I would point out that you know, Art Center and the entertainment track. I think they have you know a few hundred uh, you know uh, applicants, applicants, yeah. And they take, I think, like in my term, it was like seventeen people. So the odds that you're going to get in are relatively low. And I've actually had a lot of friends that didn't get in, but have, mm. but got a job before me. Okay. Right? Yeah. Because they you went to brainstorm. They right. They went yeah. to brainstorm, and yeah. they they you know were were focusing on what what is required to get a job. Whereas I was taking intro to modernism or whatever the class was. Right. You know what I mean. So so speaking yeah. of your friend getting a job, uh, you've had your as we talked before, mm -hmm. as I did, series of rejections in terms of for sure yeah. attempting to get work. Oh, I thought you were talking about girls. Oh. That's, <laughs> <laughs> that's a yeah, a lot that's, of those. Yeah. yeah, plenty of those for me. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Um, anyway, but uh, <laughs> so 
you know, you told me a story about. Like, you want to just recap your kind of animation story? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Moral of the story is, you know, rejection is just part of the business, and so mm. I know that again. You know, uh, a lot of artists are are sensitive, especially students and things like that, and, and it kind of touches on, you know, just going back to what we were talking about earlier about being honest in critiques and things like that. Mm. Um, but uh, you know, another part of that is essentially a rejection is an honest critique from a studio. Right? Yeah, true. essentially the studio is saying we, we are in the middle of a litmus test here where you're either in or you're, you're not. It's dichotomous, right. right? So either you're good enough or you're not. It's relatively objective. And so imagine, by the way, going back to what we were talking about before, in art school, if everyone just coddled you and said you were the best, you would actually have no idea where you stood right, until right. you get rejected by the studio. Mm -hmm. So I would much rather have a teacher or, you know, people I trust tell me like, look, you can work on this, then I have an opportunity to improve it and grow, and then I have a much better chance of getting in to a studio, which is the ultimate goal, right? Right. right. So um, yeah, I mean, I've been rejected a bunch. I remember, um, you know, I really wanted to be in New York at one point, so I applied to Blue Sky as an animator twice, got rejected both times, um, and also expect the rejection, right. right? Because it's not personal, it's just an indicator of where your work is that moment, or also what they need. Like they may not, you mm. may be amazing, but they're just not, they right. don't need your stuff or your style or whatever it is. Because after yeah. you, after the Sony thing happened, you're like, okay, well, let me try to reconnect with Pixar. They wanted an interview at, with right. you after all. Yeah. And then you made a new demo reel. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. So I tried again without actually bouncing that off of anyone. And that's mm -hmm. another, you know, thing I learned from failure, which by the way, you know, in my opinion, like art is mostly failure. Oh, for if, sure. You know, if you, if you talk to anyone who has any sort of success, the majority of what they do is failure. You know what I mean? So, um, but you only need to succeed a few times to actually have it pay off. So, uh, you know, I think again, the thing is just to, man, just work hard and be resilient, I think is the biggest thing. Right. Um, so yeah, so, uh, you know, I, I didn't really, I don't know why, but I didn't take the time to really have anyone else look at my work. And you know, sometimes when you look at your work, and then you look at it like 24 hours later, you can see, yeah. like you don't see Every mistakes. Every time. Yeah. yeah. So I call that like the animator stare. It happens all the time in concept as well. Or even like when you flip the canvas, you're like, wait a minute, this is, looks terrible, you know? Yeah. And so, um, yeah, I, I didn't do that. And, you know, it hurt me because they were like, uh, what happened? <laughs> you know yeah, what I'm yeah. saying? Like, and they said, sorry, we're not interested yeah, anymore. Right. Yeah, right. Basically. Yeah, they were just yeah. like, uh, we're not going to, you know, like we're moving on, you know, so uh, yeah. and I, I stopped trying after that. Um, you know, because other opportunities came up and right. I, you know, moved on from there. And then how did you end up at Disney Animation? Yeah, so so that was actually a really interesting situation. I was at Rhythm and Hughes at the time mm -hmm. and um, I had applied, and this is another great, you know, learning thing too, where I had applied like eight months prior. So Disney. it took them, yeah, so it took them eight months to get back to me. Wow. Okay. And so, yeah, I guess like, I don't know what the lesson is there. Like, don't give up the faith, do yeah, other things. Yeah, but, yeah. you know, like it takes studios a long time. So like, you're not their top priority. You so know? expect rejection, but also don't assume that it's all, it's the end of the world if you don't hear back. Right Absolutely. Away. But I mean, I assume if I haven't heard back in a couple months and I, I usually will try to reach out and be like, hey, you know, it was great, you know, talking to you or whatever, or submitting my work, you know, any, 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 you know, feedback on that. And, you know, the worst thing I'm going to do is just not write you back. But, uh, you know, if... If they don't write you back, I assume that they've moved on, mm -hmm. and and I just will explore other options, you know. But it so it was a nice surprise when I heard from them. Okay, and so yeah. I had to you know talk to my manager. So this is an, another example, kind of relating to the Sony situation, where you know I spoke with my manager. I said, hey, look, this is actually a really great opportunity, mm -hmm. um, and Disney was very adamant. They wanted me to be there in a week. Like they didn't even wow. give me two weeks. So I was on contract with Rhythm and Hughes, and I, I sort of pleaded with my manager. That's and, crazy. Dude. Yeah, and and she was extremely upset. Of course. And she was like, I'm going to call Disney. And I was like, please don't. You Wait, know what I mean? It? But anyway, so yeah, she was like, no dice uh, at first. And mm -hmm. I was like, you know, this is a huge lifetime opportunity. Please right. allow me to, you know. I'd burn that bridge. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. But, uh, but I would have stayed, you know. Uh, but luckily, we were able to negotiate it, and she was so cool about it. And she just finally relented and said, you know. Uh, you know, it's okay. We'll, we'll make it work. And that's great. And I was glad for it. You know, mm -hmm. it was, Disney was one of the best studios I've ever worked at socially. It's an amazing company. Um, yeah. I've, yeah. I've been there like some, 
It was like cereal box, uh, whatever, everywhere. Yeah, the right. Free cereal. Yeah, yeah. for sure, man. And yeah. it, not just the perks, but like the people, really. Is I'd imagine. Yeah, yeah and, and that, that to me is the most important thing is, is who you're working with. You know, I want to work with people that are the best at what they do, that yeah. are super inspiring, places where I can grow and also contribute. Mm-hmm. And so Disney was one of those spots. I mean, I just made so many great friends and, and just met just amazing people and just incredible artists. I mean, you know, John Cars was there, like... Just an just amazing, amazing people. Yeah. You know, Joe Pitt, uh, Jules Soto, like just you know, friends that I still have today that that I just love and admire the work. Eric Fountain, and you know, now these folks are like all over the industry. And you right know, on. Lorelai Bovet was there. She and Kim was there. I mean, it was just an amazing place. You know, not to mention like Glenn Keane. Yeah. I just, I just was like, I couldn't believe it. You yeah. know, it was like a sponge. It was just really, really rewarding being there. Good old Burbank, California. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, what what projects were you on there? So I worked on Bolt. Okay. Yeah. Right on. Which was, you know, um, yeah, it was just, it was more, honestly, to me, it was more of just really being saturated in an environment with some of the best animators in the world. Like, you know, I was down the hall from like people like Eric Goldberg or Andreas Deja, which were just mm. like legends. You know what I mean? I'm so sad that all the names you just mentioned besides Glenn Keane, yeah. I have no idea who <laughs> these people are yet. Yeah. Yeah. No doubt. Yeah. Well, look them up. That They're will. great. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's so. awesome. We talked about a lot of things. Uh, yeah. And we covered a lot of things uh, that were really important. Um, so thanks to everybody who's watched, who watched this. And uh, definitely look forward to more content. And check out the links in the description. I'll be posting his uh, art station and Instagram. Definitely give him a follow. And uh, leave in the comments if you want to see more content from him. I think he should make a YouTube channel. So, Yeah, thank you guys. And by the way, I just wanted to say, too, thank you so much for your time. And... If you want to reach out to me, you know, I'm more than welcome to uh, to make new art friends. And yeah. Uh, yeah, mostly you can find me on socials at Ben Carr Arts. That's K-A-R-R-A-R-T, mm-hmm. one word. Um, or you can just look me up, uh, Benjamin Carr uh, on ArtStation. Also, again, want to give a shout out to Q Fang, John Park, Brian Matias, and, and you for all the help, man. <laughs> for sure, man. It was, yeah. it was, it was cool. It was, yeah, it's fun to help you. Yeah. Um, because you helped me with fitness at the time, too. So I was really cool. Oh, right on. Yeah. Yeah. Back yeah. in the day. Good times. Um, all right. Well, thanks for cool. joining. Yeah. Thank you, man. Thank yeah. you, guys. Yeah, have a good one. Take care. Bye.